hello hello dear viewers welcome to our channel it's very good to have you here in this video we will be looking at how to perform a cylinder compression test when engine performance is down or if misfiring occurs which cannot be attributed to the ignition or fuel system a compression test can provide diagnostic clues as to the engine's condition if the test is performed regularly it can give warning of trouble before any other symptoms become apparent in order to perform the compression test the engine must be fully warmed up to normal operating temperature the battery must be fully charged, and the aid of an assistant will also be required. Remove the fuel pump fuse or disconnect the fuel supply to the engine somehow, and then, if possible, start the engine and allow it to run until the residual fuel in the system is exhausted. Failure to do so could result in damage to the catalytic converter. And then proceed to removing all the spark plugs. Feed a compression tester to spark plug hole, and there are different types of cylinder compression tests the type of tester which screws into the plug trade is to be preferred. Well, these are the materials required for doing the compression test. Here we have a compression gauge, the compression gauge, and with the adapter. This one is preferable. We have a spark plug socket. You can use or you can use either of these, depending on the size. And then in order to perform a weight test, you need an oil can. And also if you want, you can use a remote start switch push button of this kind. You can use this remote start switch in order to help assist in cranking. You can connect this between battery terminal and the, the starter motor terminal 50. So these are the materials required for the compression test. Now let's proceed to the test. Now make sure the engine has reached its operating temperature. Once the engine has reached its operating temperature, we need to disconnect the fuel supply and we need to disconnect the ignition system. Now disconnecting the ignition system can be done for example on this engine by simply disconnecting the feed to the distributor press it, press it in, pull it out disconnected the distributor so there is no ignition now I can also disconnect the fuel line by disconnecting line coming to the fuel pump this is the fuel pump I can disconnect line coming to the fuel pump that way fuel will be disconnected if it is an electrical fuel pump you can disconnect fuse or disconnect the electric supply going to the fuel pump but this is a mechanical fuel pump, so I can simply disconnect line coming from the fuel tank, put it aside. This way I can disconnect the fuel supply to the engine. So disconnecting the fuel will save your catalytic converter and also it will reduce wastage of fuel. Now once that is done, you need uh, somebody to hold the throttle wide open. The throttle has to be kept wide open. For this particular case, I can pull it open so that we have maximum air admittance into the cylinder. Let's do that. Or you can have somebody press the accelerator pedal when doing the cylinder compression test. The throttle valve is fully opened. Now let's proceed to removing all the spark plugs. Now the remote start switch can be connected between terminal 50 of the starter motor and battery positive. Now as you can see the remote start switch is connected between battery positive and then goes into the switch and then comes up and go to the starter motor terminal 50 right there. It's a good idea to record it in such a manner. We have a compression test result sheet, we have a dry test, and we have a wet test. I will explain that in a minute. When we will measure cylinder number one, number two, number three, and number four, and uh, as we measure, we will find, we will record the reading right here. Let's do the dry test. Dry test is without adding oil to the cylinder. We measure it just as it is. Let's do the first test. Grab the adapter and then screw it in. Only hand tight. Ready? Let's have a closer look at the reading. It's a little above 180. 
somewhere around 185 psi. So this is the value for cylinder number one. This is the dry test. Now in order to discharge, you simply press it here. Press this and it will discharge. And if you lift this up, it can be disconnected from the gauge. Simply push this up, then it comes out. So we have recorded the dry compression test result for cylinder number one. It's 185 psi. Let's do the weight compression test. Now in order to do the weight test, all we have to do is we remove this adapter and then we add a teaspoonful of oil, just a couple of squirt into the cylinder right here. And then we'll see if that compression value changes. So just grab an oil can and spray oil in there. Couple of squirt will be enough. Couple of spray will be enough. Then we proceed to making the compression test once again. By adding oil, we have assisted the piston rings to have better compression. The reading has shifted now. Previously it was 185. Now it has increased to somewhere around 14.5 kilogram per square centimeter or somewhere around 200 psi. So the weight result is somewhere around 200 psi for cylinder number one. Well, what the oil does is it will go there, it will go down and it will seal the, the opening between the piston ring and the cylinder wall. By increasing that sealing, we have increased the compression value to 200 psi. Now when performing a compression test, there are three possible areas of leakage. Now the compression test will tell us how well the mechanical parts of the engine are compressing air. Now there are three possible areas of leakage. One is through the valves. If the valves are not sealing enough, if the valves are not completely sealed on their valve seat, one leakage is through the valves. The other leakage is through the piston rings. There are piston rings here if there is compression leakage down through this gap. And finally, the third causes leakage through the cylinder head gasket. Here we have a gasket. If there is a blown up gasket, that can also lead to leakage. Adding oil will seal the entire piston ring area. Oil will cover all this area. And then, if compression improves, those irregularities will be closed. If compression improves, that means there is a problem with the piston ring. If compression does not improve, it means leakages on the valve side. Let's do the same test for cylinder number two, three, and uh, four. Now we'll be doing dry compression test for cylinder number two. It's hooked up to cylinder number two. Here we have the remote. Let's do it. It's near 200 psi almost 200 psi now the value is changed to 210 psi 10 psi. It's 195 psi. Wet test for cylinder number three. somewhere around 210.
I mean 130 PSI. Let's do weight test for cylinder number four. Let's do it. Somewhere around 145. So let's say 145 PSI. So this is how you do compression test. Now we have performed dry test and we have performed wet test. On the dry test, as you can see, the value is a little lower because of the leakage between the cylinder wall and the piston ring. Now when oil is added, obviously that pressure is going to increase. Now if this value remains the same after oil is added, it means the majority of the leak is taking place up to the valve and the valve seat. But if there is improvement, it can show that there is a problem with the piston ring and all we need to do is we need to compare now. Comparison has to be made. There has to be a maximum of 20% variation among the cylinders. If there is extreme variation among the cylinders, it means that will produce irregular power, irregular running of the engine. Now, if you happen to have similar compression, low readings on neighboring cylinders, for example, if there is low compression reading between cylinder number three and cylinder number four, it indicates that the head gasket between the two cylinders is blown up. If there is a gasket, compression leaks this way, this way. If there is extremely large valve, that would be an indication of a carbon deposit accumulation inside the cylinder. Now, if there is excess carbon deposit accumulation inside the combustion chamber, that will reduce the clearance volume to which air fuel is compressed at the end of compression stroke, and that will increase the compression result value. Note that the compression should build up quickly and help the engine. Low compression on the first stroke followed by gradually increasing pressure on successive strokes indicates worn piston rings. A low compression reading on the first stroke which does not build up during successive stroke indicate leaking valves or a blown head gasket. Or it could be con attributed to a cracked head. Deposits on the underside of the valve head can also cause low compression. Look for minimum values of compression pressure given in the specification. If one cylinder is about 20% lower than the others and the engine has a slightly rough idle, a warm camshaft lobe could be the cause. If the compression rating is usually high, the combustion chambers are probably coated with carbon deposit. If it is the case, the cylinder head should be removed and decarbonized. On completion of the test, refit the spark plug and refit the fuel supply line. So these are some of the things that you need to take into consideration. If you have a manual, compare it to the manual and that will tell you how well the mechanical parts of the engine are contributing to the power output of your engine. So this is how you do a compression test and this is also how you analyze the result. Just focus if there is variation among the cylinders, if they are extremely low or extremely high compared to the manual specification and then you can decide what to do with the engine. Well, this is all we have for you in this presentation. If you like this video, please smash the like button. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.